Welcome to Amuse News, the news that may amuse you if your muse is music. My name is Alexei Gudesman and this is my co-anchor Jack Ofsky. Jack is not much of a talker, but that may be just what we need. So far music news has looked like this. Mr. Cole, what kind of parents did you have? My father and grandfather were Baptist ministers. And my grandmother and mother. mother were members of the Baptist church. In a nutshell, I will tell you stuff that has happened recently, pick out a subject that I can rant on about, speak to guests who most probably have nothing that special to say, but are for some reason considered stars in the world of music. And then I will pick out a theme for the week to focus on, which may be as specific as the piccolo, or as broad as pop music. But without much further ado, let's get to the headlines. Cardi B files for divorce from Offset. Amuse News is wondering, what set it off? Earth, Wind & Fire celebrates their song September with a new remix. The launch is expected sometime in October. A trumpet built in 1948 belonging to Louis Armstrong himself will be auctioned off on the 14th of October. It is unclear whether he had it with him on the moon. Justin Bieber stars as Drake in a new DJ Khaled music video, confirming our suspicions that all pop stars are the same person. The Berlin Philharmonie has decided to adapt a new chessboard seating, meaning the first row can only move one step at a time, whereas C3 can move to C5, D9 must jump over the bishop, and audiences that achieve checkmate in six moves or less get the money back. It will be obligatory to wear a mouth and nose covering, whilst eye masks and earplugs remain optional. Maestro Ivan Fisher has invented a new coronavirus face mask that doubles up as a carnival costume. Apparently, it also enhances the audio experience, and for an additional 10 euro, you can even have a matching Dumbo trunk. In this day and age of fake news on the one side and weird orange-skinned people claiming that everything is fake news on the other, I thought it may be nice to have real, authenticated and 100% approved fake news. The following news is most definitely fake. Yasha Heifetz, arguably the best and maybe the fastest violin player of all time, has been found to have a definite advantage he had a third arm. No one would have ever realized uh, had the following picture not turned up. Before he had the third arm implant, Heifetz's playing had something to be desired. Now over to Lucy Landymore and her musical tutorials. This is the violin, pronounced in German, violin. Why? So today we're going to start with the, a very high note. Uh, as you can hear from that, I can get many different tones out of the instrument and I'm going to de demonstrate again on, on this note. which is the octave above. As you can see, the fretboard is black. No one really knows what notes they're playing. And now I'm going to demonstrate the tension and the release that you can make on the violin. The tension. And release. We 
have a sponsor, Tomastic Infel. They've asked me to introduce this string. This is the E string that I play. It's really good, so we've done that. And now, something completely different. Tomastic strings out of this world. And now my favorite part of the show, Juice Rant. All men decides how modern music should be. Make up the rule, it gotta be out of key. Ah. So I'm sitting all comfy in my concert seat. I've been to the toilet. I'm ready to enjoy my Mozart symphony that's full of joy. And then the symphony orchestra walks on. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, is this a funeral? Am I in a fucking funeral? What, what's going? Did somebody die? It's like a procession. Oh, and then the soloist walks on, wearing tails and suit. Ooh, I'm above you. I'm an elite. No, you're not. You're a human being. Just be normal. Say hello. Did you say hello? Hello, I paid money to come see you. No, but they're all dressed very seriously. It's like, this is my uniform to play Beethoven. It's terrible. Musicians should be celebrated for their individualism. In the orchestra, everybody looks black. You look so drab. I can't see you. Where are you? I just see like some blob. No, where? Color. Music is full of color. While we're at it, what the fuck is this turtleneck thing? Since when does it say, oh, if you're a conductor, I've graduated from conducting school. Oh, here's your turtleneck, maestro. This is total bullshit. And you know what? Turtlenecks look terrible. What is this? Oh, I'm Sir Blah Blah. I'm conducting a turtleneck. You know, the only person that makes turtlenecks look good is Sharon Stone. Okay? Is Sharon Stone a conductor? No. So please, let musicians wear whatever they want and enjoy the music and play great. This is Yankee Joe reporting for Amuse News. But now it is time for our main subject today. This week, I would like to focus on the subject which everyone is most likely sick of hearing about, but has to, the coronavirus and its impact on music. Arguably, nothing ever in the world of anything ever has affected the world of music more than the coronavirus. Well, maybe the plague. I mean, Black Death was not great for playing concerts either. Musicians were struggling and poor already before the pandemic, but now it has reached the next level. As millions of musicians are considering taking up a job as accountants or, or software engineers, or in the UK, half of the musicians are already doing it, some countries try to help their freelancers. Well, some more than others. Look, those numbers are fictional and made up. Which brings us back to the problem of fake news. It's so easy. If you do not have the budget for real research, you make up the numbers uh, or you pull them from other websites which don't have the budget and make them up themselves. Then one can cite each other's bullshit numbers and bingo, welcome to 2020. The help that musicians are getting in the US is being fired from various orchestras without anywhere else to turn. The pop world is not really affected any less, especially as some of the acts are used to performing in large stadiums. Now the future looks a bit like this. Of course, if you're not a top star and have been struggling before, you are really fucked now. The movie The Pianist depicted how a career of an individual was ruined by World War II for several years. Literally every pianist is the pianist in that movie these days. If you played gigs as a normal pop jazz or classical muso and were not part of some <laughs> gra... The what? Muso. <laughs> muso is a musician, it's a slang for musician. <laughs> If you played gigs as a normal pop, jazz, or classical muso and were not part of some grand orchestra, you could have saved up all you wanted, but after some months, you're still fucked. But hey, orchestras are fucked too, and some more than others, I guess. In Europe, many orchestras are supported by the government. The US system of having rich donors as patrons is a good idea in theory, but once the economy has a downturn like during corona times and the donors jump off. Bye bye orchestra. 
orchestras are closing left, right, and center and simply firing their musicians and staff, which in the US is about 80 players to 800 staff members per orchestra. But that slight discrepancy we will talk about another time. Staying at home has forced musicians to reconsider everything. Some started practicing, some stopped practicing, some started and then stopped. Then we had the second wave. The second wave of musicians posting performances from home. This ranged from professional Hope at Home, recorded for Deutsche Grammophon broadcast on art and social media, to this. <laughs> At the same time as so many musicians suffering, the violinist Daniel Hope's career has gone through the roof to such an extent that some people have started conspiracy theories that Daniel Hope orchestrated the coronavirus. Not really, but perhaps after this they will. Speaking of the devil, our guest here today is no other than Daniel Hope himself. He is a violinist who records on the legendary classical music label Deutsche Grammophon. Born in South Africa for some reason, he is of German-Jewish descent, with his maternal grandparents escaping the Nazis. Basically, he is an all-round musician, a writer, a radio host, a music activist, a producer who curates multiple festivals, so he's a pretty bloody big deal, okay? Hi Daniel, great to have you on Amuse News. Great to be here with you, Alexei. wherever we are exactly. Where are we? What is this, by the way? Yeah, it's just the thing that I do. Don't, just don't worry about it. Just, just, just relax. Uh, anyway, Daniel, we met for the first time over 30 years ago at the Schleswig-Holstein Festival, uh, where we used to just hang out and, I guess, play some music. Um, what have you done since then? Have you done anything special? Where have you been? <laughs> was it really 30 years ago? My goodness me. Absolutely. Uh, I guess, yeah, I've been, I've been playing uh, the violin a lot. I've been traveling. I've been writing books, making films, um, a bit like you do, taking my inspiration from people that think outside the box, because uh, that's what makes me tick, really. Sorry, am I uh, boring you? I was just checking the oral measurements of the banana. I beg your pardon? It's, well, never mind. Um, this morning you were meeting with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Now you're talking to me. Are you worried about the sudden rapid decline in your career? Yes, I'm very, very concerned by it. But um, I've heard good things you. about you, so I thought I would give it a try. During the start of the pandemic, most people decided that they would just take some time off and chill. But you partnered up with Arte and Deutsche Grammophon and started Hope at Home which was basically streaming high quality home concerts with some unusual soft lighting in a background and you introducing your illustrious guests with your sexy deep voice. Um, was this in order to send the message to the other musicians, look at me, I'm better than you? Or what, what was the reason? No, no, of course it wasn't. On the contrary, um, you know, I was like everybody in the lockdown, sitting here with an empty diary and watching those streams, the same as you were. Right. And at the beginning, I thought, this is fantastic. People are getting out there, communicating, playing from their balconies, from their garages. And it was a wonderful symbol that we were connected somehow around the world with music. And after a couple of days and a week, I started to wonder about the sound quality of the streams. Because classical music is about listening, it's about sound. The head of Arte rang me up the day after the lockdown, and he said, would you be interested in a, in a stream from home? I said, I would, but only if I can make it sound really like a concert hall. And he said, I don't think that's possible. So I said, well, I, I know people that I think could do that, and they're the guys from Teldec Studios, um, whom I love. You know, they're just some of the greatest sound engineers in the world. So I rang, oh, wow. I rang them up, I said, can you come over here, right here where I'm sitting, and I said, can you tell me in these four walls around here, can we make this sound good? And they took out their microphones and their adjustments and you know, they're very clever guys. And they said, yeah, I think we can make it happen. And so that's when I called Arte back again, said, okay, let's do it. Uh, not really knowing when we would start or how it would happen. And then Arte said, okay, let's start tomorrow night. I was like, you're crazy, that's not possible. He said, we have to do it. If you wanna do it, you have to do it now. It has to be live. 
So in we went, and I expected we might do five, maybe 10, the most two weeks. I had no idea we'd do 70 episodes and 8 million people would stream it. I had absolutely no idea. I have to say, it is also your sexy voice and the soft lighting in the background. I mean, the playing is beautiful, but listen, that, that's listen, like the killer. Don't underestimate soft lighting, Alexei, you know? Uh, that's it can, what I'm saying. It can, it can get you very far. It's amazing what you're doing. It's, it's really great. So um, I think you, you, you can do it now. You can get it out. Oh, what? Get, get it out. You can get it out. You can take get, it out. Get what out? Just take the, take out the CD you want to play. Uh, uh, but you asked me to show this. This is Hope at Home, uh, the Deutsche Grammophon CD, the best of, which I've been asked to relentlessly plug by my good friend, Alexei Gudesman, well-known television personality, composer, violinist, and jack of all trades. And uh, we'd be very happy if you consider purchasing this as soon as possible. If you like, now is your moment to just tell us about your next concerts coming up. You can just list them. Just go ahead. Just say everything that you're doing. <laughs> oh, come on, don't be like that. No, it's it's you. We're gonna plug your shit. I mean, this is what it, this is for. You're supposed to. Your people have to come to your concerts. So. Well, this, this week I'm going to be in Prague. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week, but thank you, Daniel. However, hope is near as concerts have started happening, but with some minor restrictions. And one has to say that some of the musicians may just be a little bit out of shape. What's that? Come on. Oh my god. That was so nice. Harmony. Yeah. What's wrong with my shape? Oh, I'm in love with the shape of you. We push and pull like a magnet too. Although my heart is falling too. I'm in love with your body. And last night you were in my room. Additionally, orchestra started doing corona videos. <laughs> Us musicians are having a hard time, but there are still people starving in the world and women being abused, especially during Corona times. Which brings me to a video where I was involved in with the Impossible Orchestra, which is a really wonderful and noble idea by the Mexican conductor Alondra de la Parra, who has recruited top soloists like Maxim Vengerov, and for some reason me, and forced us to play orchestra parts of the famous Mexican Danzón by Arturo Márquez. This project has raised hundreds of thousands of euros for good causes before it even launched. Unless you put some effort into it and maybe even raise some money for a good cause or at least for yourself. Stop making pointless corona videos. Which reminds me that I made a pointless corona video. But I made a point of it being utterly pointless. There is no good cause, there is no money raised, there is no endorsement or financial interest for anyone, only financial loss for me. But oh my god, it was so much fun to make. Writing the lyrics to this poetic masterpiece took me literally seconds, but I simply had to do it. And what is my message? Stay safe, stay sane, and stay creative, because that is the only way to stay sane. And now, without much further ado, arguably the most pointless thing or song or whatever you want to call it that came out of Corona times. Corona na na na. It's Corona times. 
time to stay at home. Corona na na na. Stay at home. Corona na na na. Don't you move. Corona na na na. Just you alone. Corona na na na. Na. very surprising aspect that has come out of corona times many people who were safely employed and kept on working from home without any danger of losing their job felt worried lost and at times even depressed yet many musicians and artists whose whole financial existence was jeopardized felt empowered through the sudden creative and reflective time now of course there were plenty of us who were and still are worried but essentially there is something freeing about well about being free free from having to play concerts and having obligations and able to pursue creative ideas such as randomly starting your own personal music news that amuse amuse news was made possible with the help of tomastic infeld music traveler and a whole bunch of amazing people listed in the credits. Look, this was the first episode, so, you know, it'll probably get better, maybe or maybe not. I mean, who gives a shit, right? <laughs> Subscribe. Subscribe.